Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this Kuwait Television live coverage of the 70th anniversary of the establishment of the Kuwait Investment Office in London. The history between the United Kingdom and the state of Kuwait exemplifies friendly and harmonious relations. The strong economic ties between the two sides actually date back before the establishment of the modern state of Kuwait. The two allies have always maintained a deeply rooted relationship based on mutual respect and support for one another. Since the beginning of official relations between the two countries, their relationship has seen ever-growing and strengthening bonds. Since the inception of the state of Kuwait, the United Kingdom has aided in its development. A key factor in this development and bridge between the two societies is the Kuwait Investment Office in London. In addition to investing in Great Britain, KIO, or the Kuwait Investment Office, is also an active investor at the global level and uses London as its base as it managed more than 65 billion pounds globally, which represents part of the funds and assets managed by the General Authority for Investment. Here's more on that in the following report. As oil became an increasingly important source of revenue for Kuwait, our forefathers realized its potential to promote the sustainable development and welfare of the Kuwaiti people for generations to come. Among those was the late Emir, His Highness Sheikh Abdullah Al Salim Al Subah, who in February 1953 established the Kuwait Investment Board, headquartered in the city of London, with a mandate to invest surplus oil revenue and reduce Kuwait's reliance on a single finite source. Following the birth of Kuwait as an independent sovereign nation in 1961, a modern investment paradigm was introduced to ensure the sustainable growth of a young nation, including the basic investment principles that would later become the further generations' fund. A few years later, in 1965, Kuwait adopted a policy of diversification of assets and portfolios which lead to the KIB being replaced by the Kuwait Investment Office. In 1976, the late Emir of Kuwait, His Highness Sheikh Jabr al Ahmed al Sabah issued a decree creating the Reserve Fund for Future Generations as an intergenerational saving platform for the state of Kuwait by allocating a minimum of 10% of the state's annual revenues to this platform. As Kuwait continued to grow as a nation, a new mechanism was developed to manage all the state's reserve funds. The Kuwait Investment Authority was then established in 1982 as KIO's parent organization. KIA's main function included managing the state's reserve, the FGF, and any other funds entrusted to the KIA by the Minister of Finance. Stemming from this rich history, KIA continues working to safeguard the financial wealth of Kuwait's current and future generations by diversifying revenue streams and ensuring a fiscally sustainable and secure future. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to our live coverage of the 70th anniversary of the Kuwait Investment Office in London. With us here today in the studio is the economist, Nadir Saleh al Ubaid. Good afternoon, Mr. Nadir. Good afternoon. For our first question, I'd just like to ask, the Kuwait Investment Office in the UK has significant investments and achievements throughout the world. How has this partnership, formed over the years, become a force of economic support for both countries? First of all, thank you for the invitation and being on this occasion. Uh, definitely, you know, KIO as part of the vision of the late uh, Sheikh Abdullah Salim. Uh, definitely, it was uh, a thought of diversification of 
the economy and uh, being in one of the largest and recognized economy as the British economy definitely it will have an added value down the road since the establishment at that time now we are talking about 70 years and during the 70 years we are not talking about only the investment side we are talking about coaching listen in financial sectors mm -hmm. you know we've been sending um, uh, bankers there for education, you know, the, uh, being close to the uh, recognized financial firms there during 70s and 80s, it was an added value to, to the human resources in Kuwait. This is another thing, because you see, if you, if you recognize, or if you see Kuwait, during 70, 60s, they thought of having some investment companies. Some of them are internationally active and some of them domestically, which used to be Kuwait Investment uh, Company and KFTCIC, Kuwait Foreign Trading and Contracting Company and mm -hmm. uh, KIC, K uh, Kuwait Investment Inter International Company. So they call them a three case. But those the three companies used to be the arms even for Kuwait Investment Authority. Authority beside having the exposure of KIO. So, you know, these, uh, those uh, companies, they have left Kuwait into the international uh, standard of investment. And when we talk about investment, it's not only investment. Now, Kuwait used to have different hats, even on the lending side, with coordination with Kuwait Fund and other firms. So, you know, the diversification, even the, and the financial instruments mm -hmm. ha had, have been recognized internationally. And frankly speaking, uh, Kuwait, uh, through KIO and the international firms, like the three Ks, and uh, they were recognized in the region and internationally. So uh, the, 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 the issue, not only the investment size, so you know, developing the skills and the knowledge of the human resources, this is one of the things mm -hmm. that uh, uh, part of the vision that Kuwait had at that time uh, to be exposed to a different market. Luckily, that you know, the special relationship between the two sides, Kuwait and UK, definitely it was a good hub for uh, being close to the European countries before we go further to the States. Yes. So, so this is uh, brought different um, values in terms of uh, exposure and diversification to help Kuwait in different occasions. And we have noticed that during the invasion time and before that and after that. So, you know, this special relationship, we, 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 we evaluate it in different levels, not only on the, on the investment side. You were speaking earlier about uh, coaching or training the manpower and the labor force in Kuwait. Do you see this as uh, a key goal in the future relations? Yes, uh, you see, uh, KIO and KIA, they are managing portfolios and it's been spreaded over number of portfolio managers. And like JB Morgan and so many big firms. Mm -hmm. So whenever there is a chance of workshops or training, okay, you see the employees, the newcomers in KIA or the investment uh, field are invited there and, you know, uh, accommodated in such uh, uh, workshops. And I get the, the, the opportunity during the 80s to be in one of the three cases. Oh. And I remember that we used to be sent to spend some time in one of the uh, um, big firms, like at that time, Midland Bank uh, and, and the city, Barclays. That's why, you know, KIA brought a valuable, um, you know, existence 
within the financial sector. So the training and developing the human resources not now. It goes more than 30 to 40 mm -hmm. years. So that's why, that's why you see uh, we, have, we used to have, and we still have, good internationally recognized bankers in the, in the international market. And I think we should not limit ourselves only to the training side. I think bringing new ideas, especially that, you know, London is considered the capital market. Uh, economic and capital, and yeah. economy. So I think, I think we, should, we should focus or at, least at, least or at least maximize the benefit of such occasions, especially now we are talking about the 70 years, you know, uh, celebration. I think we should, we should uh, uh, enlarge our exposure to UK. How do you believe we can increase our exposure? You see, now Kuwait has vision and since 2005, we're talking about the financial center and we've been developing that idea and vision in different direction. Mm -hmm. I think we should tie up with UK since they have the best financial center to at least benefit from that experience, bringing investments, investors through CADIBA, which is the authority for the foreign yeah. investment, uh, and try to develop the infrastructure for the financial sector. Because what makes London special? Because of the infrastructure that's been invested and maintaining all the years. Yes. That's why it's been recognized. And now they are developing and they are bringing new ideas and new instruments. Now it is, London is considered the, the green finance. Green finance. Green finance. So you see now they are bringing, innovating a new instrument, which I think we should learn from that market by being close to them, close to the, the, that market, and at least get the opportunity to bring that know-how and mm -hmm. the knowledge and the uh, expertise to help in developing the, the infrastructure. I think this is very important at this stage. Now I think uh, we, should, we should bring and redirect the, the, the investment and the know-how and the expertise to the local market since Kuwait is uh, targeting the foreign investment to be bring brought to, 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 to Kuwait. For our next question, could you tell us about the importance of the historic relations between both countries and how it provided an opportunity? We did speak on this a little bit, but how it creates an atmosphere of economic trade exchange over the last few years. Well, uh, if you are talking about specific stops and uh, occasions, I think KIO, during the critical time, we should recognize this and we should elaborate a little about this. Okay. Beside the economic side, during the invasion time, KIO was the central bank for the government during the invasion time. Yes. It was the treasury, it was the regulator. And during that time, KIO almost spent five billion dollar during the seven month, okay, on different uh, expenses and costs during that. Mm -hmm. So this is a benefit of having KIO during the even critical time. In addition to that, UK has facilitated to the government to you to, to work freely, freely without any restrictions for any requirements needed from during the invasion time and after the invasion. And this brought an idea of establishing what we call debt management office. 
it is but it's not part of KIO, mm -hmm. but it was specifically established to um, work on uh, structuring the jumbo loan, which will be used for rebuild Kuwait after the invasion. And this is a good success story being uh, uh, considered as a credit for KIO and for UK to help the go Kuwaiti government during that time. And frankly speaking, since we are talking about the, the, the jump loan, mm -hmm. there are many uh, soldiers and many uh, 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 Kuwaiti uh, will experience in the international market worked hard for that jumbo loan and that was in, now from the financial point of view and mm. from a uh, professional point of view how can you measure the quality of what you are getting as a loan first of all the size was the, the biggest size okay because be before that there was brazil 2 billion and Saudi Arabia 3 billion and Kuwait got 5, five billion. billion and when it was launched it was oversubscribed it went up to 7 8 billion so it means that uh, the confidence in Kuwait is very high this mm -hmm. is one second Kuwait used to be or at that time when when because it never went to the borrowing market always on the lending uh, the, the lending yeah. side so they have the will experience to negotiate and get the best terms and conditions for that loan. And they created a roadshow, okay, and went from UK to France, to Japan, to uh, the States. And during that time, people believed that Kuwait still carry a value of uh, sovereign risk which is well recognized as good asset diversified not only what we have in Kuwait mm -hmm. and the portfolio has something and one of my colleagues because you know at that time uh, Mr. Abdullah al Gabandi used to be the CEO of KIA and he used to be positioned there and manage the, 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 the show for that jumbo loan and mm -hmm. we need to recognize this and we give the credit for uh, Mr. Abdullah Al-Gabandi and Mr. Ahmed Abdul Qadir and Mr. Uh, Abdullah Fuer so, uh, they were at that time working hard on this specifically so my point here this gives improved the credit of Kuwait and the international standard from financial point of view and in terms of uh, regulators so you know these kind of things um, it is recognized uh, during the critical time and on top of that having the uh, support of UK mm -hmm. to facilitate the role during that time. I think we should, we should at least give the credit and talk about this incident because it helped a lo uh, Kuwait a lot during the critical time and even after that. And I think Kuwait got a good recognition when uh, they um, repaid the loan on time. So that this improves the position of KIA and Kuwait and Kuwait in general uh, from financial point of view. Which so you know, these are need to be mentioned since we are talking about the role of KIO. Uh, you mentioned roadshows around the world. What do you mean by roadshow exactly? Usually now when you have um, a requirement, a project to sell, okay, you, uh, you, you, you carry a roadshow where you know you go and present and sell the project worldwide. So the roadshow was a, a presentation because you know you, are, you, you need people before they participate in the loan and take the risk, they need to be happy, comfortable with the risk. Mm -hmm. So you know when they say when they when they see the roadshow, and give them the opportunity to at least to communicate and ask freely, then they will be happy to join. That's why the roadshow helped Kuwait to get oversubscribed with people to participate in that loan 
which is beside by the way the 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 the, the requirement was 5 billion yes. okay and because the it was oversubscribed so they have reached about 10 percent so they accepted another 500 million this shows uh, the road show is very active and very successful very strong and it made everyone comfortable to to invest their that's money right. in that's right now well considering the mutual partnership between kuwait and britain could you tell us the importance of the contribution of the investments in enhancing research, development, education, and other innovative capabilities? Yeah, well, actually, you see, uh, Kuwait now is targeting the educational side. Mm -hmm. They are targeting the investment. They are targeting the research, which we have now, Kessar and certain firms here in Kuwait. I think UK is well recognized in that field. We should uh, enlarge that benefit okay now we are talking about um, uh, artificial intelligence Today we are going to uh, different type on the robot for mm -hmm. the, the healthcare and instead of just keeping keep sending okay patient outside I think we should do the other way around why don't we bring the recognized hospitals universities to Kuwait and get the maximum use of this relationship and what we call strategic partnership yes. why because when the, you bring a hospital or when you bring a university you are not bringing a building you are bringing the know-how the expertise and the, the curriculum so many things uh, and you can be a player even in the GCC region, okay, that people can send students and uh, patients and mm -hmm. doctors and here in Kuwait. This is, I think, we should, we should consider that because, you know, when you have the economy that drives your vision, definitely this will open up to use uh, other field like the education, the healthcare, the security, the uh, technology, the, the market research, the research itself, mm -hmm. the scientific research, I mean. So, you know, if the economy is the driver, definitely this will open up the doors for other fields. Yes. Of course. Uh, in what ways do you believe Kuwait could benefit from deeper and closer ties with the UK? We've spoken a lot about that, uh, about the institutions and the know-how, but is there anything else that you believe we could benefit from? Yeah, well, actually, because you see, now Kuwait is targeting a huge budget to develop during that time. Mm -hmm. And UK is, uh, UK companies are recognized, uh, you know, in terms of performance and, and, and uh, execution are one of the top. I think now we should develop the idea of establishing um, specialized cities like economy city like uh, healthcare city like educational city because you need to be focused and 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 and, 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 and uh, speciality the speciality brings first of all you can spread the the the, the existing geographically in kuwait mm -hmm. and on top of that you are working hand by hand with the strategic partner that you've been working and you have a special relationship over 120 years, yes. I think now we should focus on the quality of the project that we need to. And on top of that, I think we should have the, 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 the political economy concept that drives our relationship toward the countries like uh, Kuwait when they established the KIO. KIO was the driven or the economy or the investment side is the driver for this relationship and it proved that it is a valuable and healthy relationship. So I think now since we are a bit, let's say we are a bit late in, 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 in the execution of 2035, I think we should catch up if mm -hmm. we have a strong relationship and strong partnership with such uh, large players partner and yeah. players uh, worldwide, like we are doing with other countries. That's a very uh, insightful response to that. Uh, recently, the uh, Lord Mayor of London, Vincent Kevney, 
he visited Kuwait, heading a high-profile delegation, uh, speaking about a free trade agreement with Kuwait. What is your opinion on such a move? Well, okay, uh, you see, Kuwait used to, or th Kuwait thought of the free zone mm -hmm. area during the 60s of last century. But unfortunately, we had some difficulties bringing the best solution to that. Now, never too late. I think UK has the best examples and they have good success stories in that. Now, where to uh, place it is different. Now, the regulation is very important. How can you um, benefit from their experience in the regulations? Now, when you are talking about a free zone, mm -hmm. the most important thing is the regulation. Because without good regulations and with good laws to attract investors, okay, having the land is not the only factor to make it successful. So I think we should tie up with UK because they have good success stories. And frankly speaking, we should have more than free zone in different occasions. Now we have the free zone on the seaside, we have on the, on the, on the, on the, on the uh, land as, as, as uh, what we call Labdili. We remember that we talked about the economic zone and other places. Definitely now you need somebody to help you, to take you hand by hand, to lift you because you need to catch up. The mm -hmm. whole area and the country is working uh, rapidly to uh, improve their position and each one is working to grab market share within the region. I think we need to focus seriously about heading that uh, direction, especially that the location in Kuwait is very unique. Having that cost and being close to large two markets, the collectively we are talking about 150 million uh, population yes, at people. GCC and Iran and, 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 and uh, Iraq. Uh, not too uh, so, so, you know, these kind of things, definitely you need to analyze it and tackle and fill the gaps how to propose it and timely executed over a num number of years, even over stages, because, you know, you need to go uh, stages to improve it, provided that you have clear vision and how to structure it. And we follow the plan. That's right. Well, Mr. Nader, if uh, you don't mind holding on to this thought, we'll take a short break to take a look at this report. The Kuwaiti British relations stand as a model and epitome for relations between countries as they are continuously close historical and excellent relations that exceed in their depth and strength and political relations. The historical sources indicate that the trade relations extended between the two countries for more than 200 years, where British merchants established offices in Kuwait for the first time in the year 1793. And by the year 1821, the British East India Company moved its headquarters to Kuwait. Kuwait is considered one of the largest investors in Britain especially in the financial and real estate sectors, even more so since the Kuwait Investment Office in London opened in 1953. More on that in the following report. His Highness the Crown Prince Sheikh Mish'al al-Ahmad al-Jabu al-Subah, may Allah protect him, today patronizes and attends the ceremony marking the 17th anniversary of establishing Kuwait Investment Office in London. The Kuwait Investment Office in London part of the Kuwait Investment Authority was established in 1953 as the world's first sovereign wealth fund to oversee investments on behalf of the state of Kuwait. His Highness the Crown Prince's visit to the United Kingdom, which come at the invitation of British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak, reflects the deep relations between the two countries which have been solidified over the course of 124 years. Speaking on this occasion, the Lord Mayor of London, Nicholas Lyons, said the visit continues the tradition of strengthening ties between the UK and Kuwait in all domains. 
He highlighted that Kuwait Investment Office invested in various sectors in the capital London, adding the long-term commitment on the Kuwaiti side towards doing business in the UK reflected vast investment opportunities within Britain. Meanwhile, Chairman of the Arab British Chamber of Commerce, Baroness Elizabeth Simons, described the visit as a significant milestone in the British-Kuwaiti relations. The Baroness warmly welcomed the visit of His Highness the Crown Prince, affirming that the presence of Kuwait Investment Office in London for seven decades is a testament to the strength of Kuwaiti-British ties. In the presence of His Highness the Crown Prince, Sheikh Mish'al al-Ahmed al-Jabr al-Subah, may Allah protect him. An official ceremony will be held in London on the 70th anniversary of the inauguration of Kuwait Investment Office in the United Kingdom. The interface and headquarters of Kuwait's investment. A model of success. Building a future for the present. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to our live coverage of the 70th anniversary of the Kuwait Investment Office in London with our guest, economist Nadir Saleh al ubaid Mr. Nadir, coinciding with the celebration of the 70th anniversary and the visit of His Highness the Crown Prince to the UK, could you tell us about the importance of this participation and what it will add to the economic relations? Well, definitely, Kuwait as you know, like other countries, consider UK is different. You know, UK economically is the sixth largest economy worldwide. And the third after Germany and France in the U European community. Mm -hmm. So definitely that position and the size of the purchasing power there definitely will make Kuwait uh, look at UK economically differently mm -hmm. and the diversification as well. Now, if we are talking about what can we develop, definitely the communication like we are doing, you know that Ministry of Foreign Affairs is communicating regularly around 12 times with the ministry there. Okay. My point here to if we can uh, escalate that level and include other parties within the government to see their needs and requirements to approach the vision. Like now limiting yourself to, to, to only a level of the diplomatic relationship mm -hmm. is good, but why don't you include in the regular uh, communication because you know the market keeps evolving evolving and changing yeah. so you never know maybe you need uh, what we call the authority for foreign investment kadiba uh -huh. or 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 the ministry of finance or ministry of education ministry of defense you know y once you keep having this regular communication definitely will improve the level of communication and see your needs in, in the current situation and in the future. Why? Because, you know, keeping the relationship only on the visits, okay, you know, it takes time to, 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 to materialize the uh, benefits of Any that results from the results. Results. Yeah. So, so I think having the unique uh, example within the uh, foreign, uh, the Kuwait foreign uh, ministry, I think we should duplicate the same thing to other ministries because each one has different requirement. This is very important at this stage. I think, from my opinion, uh, in my opinion, mm -hmm. because. Uh, we are still not maximizing the benefit of 
that relationship only on the investment side and I think we should widen our, our, our exposure to that level. I think this is very important, never too late, sure. but, but the point here I think uh, we, should, we should improve, especially that now we are talking about improving the level of the education and healthcare which is the objectives of Kuwait as, and His Highness uh, the Prime Minister, definitely we should capitalize on that. Why? Because everybody knows that, you know, th that economy is recognized. And when you are talking about economy as a relationship, I look at it differently. Now, if in the healthcare, mm -hmm. as we mentioned earlier, you know, just to, 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 to manage the economic side of sending patient outside and bringing uh, Doctors and doctors and staff. economically, you are improving your or at least uh, uh, reshaping your 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 uh, budget and position financially uh, to improve the economic side of this relationship. Uh, Mr. If you can hold that thought, we'll continue it in just a moment. Uh, we'll be back for more after this break with a message from Her Excellency, the UK Ambassador to Kuwait, Ms. Belinda Lewis. Bilateral relations are very, very strong. Um, they're historic relations and they spread across lots of different areas of activity. So the cornerstone of our relationship with Kuwait was around security and defence, but nowadays it's about so much more. We have a very strong bilateral trading relationship. We're working together on all sorts of different areas in education. We welcome more and more Kuwaiti students to British universities, some of the best universities in the world each year. We're looking forward to the new intake coming to our shores in, in autumn. And we have lots of cultural engagement and activities that we enjoy sharing. And I think looking forward to the future as well, when we have the electronic travel authorization, which will be rolled out to Kuwaiti nationals in February, it'll become so much easier for Kuwaitis to pop over to the UK and have a short holiday or, or a short trip um, to come over and, and see what the UK has to offer. So our relationship has always been in a good place. Um, and I think there are many more things coming over the horizon where we can strengthen it even further. So I'm really looking forward to this visit. It's a huge honour for me that His Highness the Crown Prince is making this trip to the UK. Of course, he's visited the UK twice quite recently, um, once in October last year to attend the funeral of Her Late Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. And he was back again and graced us with his presence in May to celebrate the coronation of our King, um, King Charles III. So for him to, to come and visit us again um, is simply wonderful. And it's for a very particular reason. Um, we want to celebrate the 70th anniversary of the Kuwait Investment Authority, Kuwait Sovereign Wealth Fund, which was founded in February in 1953 in the UK. Um, there was a, a long working relationship with the Bank of England and some members of the Bank of England were actually seconded to the Kuwait Investment Board, as it was when it was first founded back in 1953. And it's been such a successful fund. Um, it is very, very wisely and very prudently managed. Um, and it's, it's a delight and an honour to know that the, the Sovereign Wealth Fund is still interested in finding more opportunities in the UK. So the, the 70th birthday celebrations um, are a really important part of the visit. But there are also other areas that we're looking forward to celebrating too. So over recent years, the UK and Kuwait have been working very closely together on cyber security. We have a, a good partnership in this area and we're looking forward to, to strengthening that further. So cyber security will be an important part of the discussions in London. Um, and we are also really looking forward to celebrating next year, 2024, which will mark our 125th anniversary of our formal diplomatic relations. 
So we want to discuss different cultural activities, um, perhaps different festivals, lots of different things that we can do to celebrate this long-standing, truly historic relationship that we've enjoyed for so long between our two countries. So In the presence of His Highness the Crown Prince, Sheikh Mish'al al Ahmed al Jabir al Subah, may Allah protect him. An official ceremony will be held in London on the 70th anniversary of the inauguration of Kuwait Investment Office in the United Kingdom. The interface and headquarters of Kuwait's investment. A model of success. Building a future for the present. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, as we continue our live coverage of the, of the 70th anniversary of the establishment of the Kuwait Investment Office in London. Now, before we return to our guest, Mr. Nadir, we'd like to be joined by Maytham al Shahs, a local economic researcher. Good evening, Mr. Maytham, and thank you for joining uh, us. Hi, good evening, and uh, you are most welcome for everyone. Uh, firstly, could you tell us what are the desired economic and social goals to improve the trade and overall relations between the two countries? Okay, first of all, uh, you know, as you discussed with your guest, and uh, uh, the brief, uh, what uh, the Her Excellency, uh, the ambassador of uh, UK, she said that our uh, relationship is back to more than 125 years, actually. Uh, in, uh, you can say, in the economic side, uh, from the beginning of uh, oil, uh, in Kuwait, uh, what appear, was appear uh, here? Here is the uh, UK. What uh, they did for Kuwait is that they establish uh, all the all the protocols for uh, Kuwait uh, companies, oil companies. I mean, uh, so we now uh, uh, you can say uh, we follow up uh, for all those protocols till now. And this uh, very important income for Kuwait, the main income in Kuwait is, uh, you know. Uh, as well as everyone is uh, the oil. So uh, they stand up with Kuwait from the beginning of uh, the main income uh, source in Kuwait, uh, which is uh, the oil. And they, uh, as you say, uh, the most important partnership from uh, all countries is between Kuwait and the uh, UK, especially because uh, you know that the interest, uh, it's, uh, you can say it's the same rule in all uh, sectors, uh, even in the private sector or the uh, uh, public uh, sectors. But, but you can say it's beginning uh, actually to improve uh, from 1942 when they established uh, the uh, Britain, uh, Great Britain Middle East Bank, uh, the first bank in Kuwait. Uh, then we can say uh, after that all of Kuwaitis, they love uh, to travel uh, as, uh, for London and uh, to go to the UK especially. Uh, there is uh, a special relationship between Kuwait and uh, uh, Britain, uh, UK exactly. Uh, you can find it uh, in all uh, our houses, uh, especially in uh, uh, the social uh, floor. Well, Mr. Maytham al uh, thank you so much for taking the time and giving us your insight. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we will turn to our guest in the studio, Mr. Nader el -Obaid. I would just like to ask you before we conclude, let me just get to the question very quickly. How does Kuwait's economic cooperation strategy with the UK open more economic prospects to face global challenges and other financial conditions? Well, uh, you see, now the international market are changing, blocks are changing. We see groups are established. We see BRICS, we see uh, the, the UE, uh, EW, mm -hmm. we see other groups might come up. I think having a continuous communication 
just to balance and review the position of, or at least collaborating from both sides, how to tackle each area, I think this is very important. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the second thing, definitely Kuwait will stay within that region for many years, regardless whether Kuwait is the driver, as we mentioned earlier, toward uh, the uh, east eastern country or the, uh, the, the American uh, areas there. Definitely there is always a hub and be used for communication. We have realized that 10 years ago or 15 years ago, there are some thoughts of moving an investment to the eastern side. Mm -hmm. After some time, we realize, or the KIO or the KIA realize that, you know, w we need to maintain that relationship for different reasons, whether for good quality of investment or political return on it and balanced relationship. This is very important to have the, the collectively the, the measurement of that level. Mm -hmm. So talking about international, I mean uh, in the future, uh, as we mentioned earlier, I think we, we, should, we should have the, we have to include other uh, areas within the government to improve it because each one is tackling different challenges uh, in, in different areas, even in the, in the infrastructure w uh, with, within the region. Mm -hmm. I think one of the reports they were talking about the fiber communication and these kind of things. Definitely you need a good partnership with reliable partnership, okay, to, to improve the level of that uh, communication. Well, Mr. Nadir, I'd like to just thank you again for your time and your knowledge and insight into this topic today. Thank you for having us for, for with this very important occasion and uh, wish you all good luck for the other coverage. Thank you very much. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this brings us to the end of this live coverage of the 70th anniversary of the Kuwait Investment Office in London. I'd like to once again thank all of our guests for taking the time to join us and speak with us. We hope you've enjoyed your time tuning in Thank you all for watching, and as always, have a good night.